Hey everyone, this is La Chang of Think Global Logistics, here to give you our second market update for the year. Think Global Logistics. What's been happening with the market? Well, like most of you who's watching this should already know, the rates in terms of ocean freight have truly crashed. Right now, for example, talking about the Australian market specifically, a container out of Asia, you can probably you know, get deals anywhere between left and right of $500 per 44 container. That could be either someone's cost or that could be either someone's sell. It's not the time to go chase those lowest of low rates because there's usually some conditions associated or attached with it that you're gonna be caught out with, guys, okay? If it looks too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Very important for you to make sure that your pricing is well adjusted within the market norm range. And right now it should be anywhere left to right of 500, depending on the port that you are importing from, okay? There will be subtle nuances here and there and so forth, or differences. So why has the market crashed? Well, COVID ended, interest rates high, our repayments of our homes all have doubled, if not tripled. The net outcome of everything that's going on in the macro world, in both economy, geopolitical tensions in Europe that's still going on, has meant that every single one of us on this planet will continue to pay more for everything we use and do. The only saving grace, like I have alluded to in the past, has been the high employment rate. And that's also causing uh, the sticky inflation, which we are all seeing and the reserve banks are trying aggressively to quash that, but they might have gone too hard too fast. And we've had a few banks in the US, uh, you know, those small to medium sized banks and also the ones associated with cryptocurrencies fail. And this has dramatic effects on the rest of the banking industry. So now the reserve banks are sort of needing to print money again, just to make sure the banks don't fail because if the banks fail, it's Mad Max 2023, right? So that's the rock and a hard place that all reserve banks are in at the moment. And let's be frank, most of these reserve banks, if decision makers, if they existed in the private world, they probably wouldn't have a job. It's a constant knee jerking that has really landed all of us, the common folk like you and I, into this situation of paying more for everything, rents going up or mortgage going up and the only saving grace is we still have a job and the pay is still relatively good because we're still getting paid at COVID levels. But that's about to change guys. Already seen from the tech industries, there's hundreds and thousands of people around the world getting laid off in that sector. And this will continue to have flow on effects into other industries. It's just gonna all catch on, right? Retail industry is suffering. Commercial real estate is, is plummeting. It's only a matter of time that the normal folks like you and I will be impacted even more with severe downturns in our individual economies in our region. There's a lot of great commentators on YouTube. I urge you to seek them out and be educated on it because one of the rules that we always apply here at TGL is that we're confronted with challenging times. It's best to learn, to read, to hear, and to understand so you can be better prepared. And this is what we are trying to do. And this is what we're trying to do with this video. Things will be a little tougher and will continue to get tougher before it gets better, guys. Probably not until 2025 will we see any sort of upspring. So uh, be prepared for that. But then again, you know, it's always good to be prepared for the worst and anything better than the worst is a bonus, as my mum will say. Um, so let's dive into logistics update. What, what are we talking about right now? Okay, so the rates of drop simply means that no one's moving stuff. We have renovated everything we can renovate. We've got no more money now, everything stopped kaput. Overall volumes, some sectors dropped by 50 to 80%. Now that's seismic, that's massive. As a result, shipping rates, specifically ocean freight rates, have crashed and plummeted. So expect the status quo for the time being. Sea freight, due to the lack of volumes that's coming through, all the bottlenecks that existed because of COVID have all cleared up now. There might be a few pockets of anomalies or exceptions that may exist where pricing have remained high. For example, such as in Australia, our current export pricing is still very, very expensive. There are some pockets of exception in the marketplace where rates have remained buoyant simply due to uh, limited capacity and those trades weren't big to begin with and therefore the demand that was in those trades consists of goods that are required 
you know, good, bad or the ugly. An example will be um, export trades from Australia to USA, Australia to Europe, and also New Zealand to Australia. There'll be other pockets of exceptions in your part of the world, be it North America or Europe. The end of April is when the stink bug season uh, concludes for this cycle or this period, which means that you no longer need to fumigate your containers for stink bug. And that will be a good cost saving there again for those of you who move shipments that traditionally have stink bug treatments applied to it. So going on to air freight, air freight has uh, been quite buoyant purely because, you know, a lot of these importers or exporters have just stopped their ocean freight movements because they are unable to predict or pre-purchase or pre-plan. So as a result, as the orders are coming through, you know, they're sort of needing to air freight a little bit more just to fulfill those orders. And that's a sort of a trade-off, isn't it? Like, you know, you're sort of holding off ordering your sea freight shipments because you don't know how much to buy and, you know, how far to predict. But then there's an order comes in, well, you have to move our air freight at a much higher expense, which means that you're not making much money as a result as well. So expect this particular scenario to play out for as long as we are in the global economics and geopolitical tensions that's been um, going on. There has also been a good injection of air freight capacity. Why? Because a lot of the airlines have turned on their additional flights or reactivated certain routes due to the high travel demand. So therefore, with more flights operating, there's more belly space to put your cargo in, and therefore that has provided a lot of capacities and options that were severely curtailed over the COVID years. So for those of you who needs air freight services, this is a great time to be moving air freight because you've got so many more options to choose from and the pricings are adjusted accordingly with the capacity that is available. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about this topic within our industry that's alive and kicking at the moment and that is the rise and fall of the digital freight forwarders. There's a lot of commentaries by a lot of good intelligent folks out there and most of them are quite negative on the digital freight forwarding experience and I'm not sure why. Yes, over the last COVID years, people had a lot of money to spend and invest onto technology. And one of the biggest markets that tech or Silicon Valley or whatever valley you want to talk about has been wanting to disrupt has been the logistics industry because we are a dinosaur industry, integrated one. With the surge in the investment of tech, there's been a lot of focus into the logistics sector. From my own personal perspective, it's a good thing because our industry does need disruption because a lot of us are still doing exactly the same processes that's been around for 30 odd years, okay? That's the reality. And in comes through over the COVID years, and well, one example is Flexport in the last 10 years. They really had made a lot of good noise for themselves, you know, these digital freight forwarders. For me, that's a good thing, because anything that brings attention to our industry, anything that creates new thinking in a productive way, whether they make money or not, as long as they brought some level of difference that is of value, it is good in my book. And believe me, when I tell you things are integrated and chaotic, they absolutely are. The surge in the digital freight forwarding has brought a lot of good attention, a lot of money, and a lot of folks are bringing new talent to our sector. And that is a good thing because one of the biggest challenges that our industry has was the lack of talent that was coming in. And through these digital freight forwarders, I have personally witnessed a lot of young, bright folks joining our sector that would have never even considered joining any of the traditional freight forwarding or logistics companies. Full stop. You can call a negative, positive, all you want. That is a fact. So given that reality, it's a good change. If things were great in our sector, there wouldn't be that many competitors. You join an industry where there's so many competitors, it just tells you that not one single company is doing a good enough job to keep the competitors away. The fact that there is over a thousand competitors here in New South Wales Australia, in a country of only 25 million people, tells you that it is the wild, wild west when it comes to logistics here in Australia. So on that bombshell and personal thought, I will leave it at that. I wanna thank you for watching these updates and we will continue to bring these updates to you as they come to hand. Thank you.